Good day, beautiful soul family, and welcome back to On Another Level. And so today's a beautiful Sunday, a beautiful Sunday. And um, did a video, Divine Spirit is talking to me about, you know, truly the layout of the land, um, about the May tricks. And, you know, tricks is for kids, tricks is for those that are immature. And we do understand, even in our own lives, there comes to a point where we are immature. And hopefully those lessons, we are able to be present. We're not in the past, um, planting seeds of things that should have been done and over with, but glean those wisdoms. And so what the Vice Spirit is telling me, that as we go through different lessons and different pressures in life, it brings forth the harvest and wisdom itself is the harvest okay and um, we should take upon it now the vice spirit was talking to me about how Cain um, it was it was it was very great for Cain to be rejected by the earth okay because when you think about it um, Abel was a shepherd of the sheep of their cattle but Cain was the tiller of the land. He was the one that was supposed to uh, be able to know about seed time and harvest. And so the thing about it, the Vine Spirit is telling me is that that's why it's so strategic. They use certain things. Um knowing what it can produce okay and and that's what divine spirit is telling me now Cain went to Nod which is mentioned that was a measure of grace because as, as far as we know in Genesis it talks about the Garden of Eden right it doesn't talk about anything else all right, but then it talks about outside, being outside of the Garden of Eden. And there's a land by the name of Nod, which is the Wanderer. And so the thing about it is, is that even though, <clears throat> even though Cain had unapologetically killed his brother, okay, he still put a mark so that Cain could live his life. At that very appointed time, the vice spirit could have killed Cain, you know, body for body. But the vice spirit knows that there are so many things. <laughs> the vice spirit is telling me, you know, Satan is, uh, he is an accuser. And I'm definitely going to upload that video that I did. I was trying to figure out if I should upload it or not. But Satan, or maybe I'll just bring it out here. Satan is an accuser. Accuses humanity. He's a prosecutor. Always trying to prove how humanity doesn't deserve this and doesn't deserve that. And how humanity is just a waste of time. A waste of space. Right? And Satan will can't come against divine spirit. Because, of course, kicked out of heaven, right? But will attack that of which divine spirit loves. And so, again, we see these different tactics. There is nothing new. As I mentioned about reptiles, they morph, but they don't metamorph. Okay, um, there isn't a level of ascension where they're doing something new. And by the way, this is August 8th. Okay, and 8-8 eight, eight is about a portal. Also, what's a portal is 8-8-8. Eight, 8 eight. Eight is about infinite. 8 is about prosperity. 8 is about cause and effect. Um, and so this is one of those portals in which you can overlook it. Or you can say, I understand divine timing. I understand that at this point in time, on 8 Eight, 
and I bring forth the third aid, which is what do I want to be prosperous in my life? You see, it's not just about money. You've got to look at these current times and don't invest your power into something that divine spirit is shutting down. We are to be in agreement with divine spirit because it is not just us. We are co-creating. And so we're, it's about creating something new. I don't want to get off topic. So it's about understanding what's really going on. So divine spirit, I was just relaxing and divine spirit told me to go into revelations namely revelations chapter 13 so i'm going to i was looking at it on my phone but i like to go to the bible and i like to read the bible revelations chapter 13. now when i read revelations chapter 13 it was stating to go check out revelation because it was talking about um how someone who is respected is taking a shot is been is taking a blow but after this blow they will be they will come back they take the blow as they take the blow they themselves are quote unquote resurrected by the beast and you know like I've stated it's not so much you know there is a hand that is behind the scenes and that hand uses them but the puppet now the puppet will not do anything and will not say anything unless it's been instructed to so it's about understanding who is behind the scenes who is that hand that is hidden because you know you can get different puppets but it's about who is behind the scenes that is running the show that is running this may tricks okay so when i read and, and and i'm gonna read it here it says i like to start from the beginning chapter 13 okay verse one and i saw a beast come up out of the sea it had ten horns and seven heads on its horns were ten crowns and on its heads were blasphemous names the beast i saw was like a leopard its feet were like a bear's and its mouth was like a lion's mouth so when I see here, okay, what I see, and we're talking about the matrix, is about the many ways in which it shows itself. Here it says, ten heads, right? Let me see, let me get it here. Seven heads, apologize. And I saw coming out of the sea. So we're looking for, <laughs> we're looking for things to come out of space. But here we're saying that it's coming out of the sea. In the Bible, it says, whoa, because Satan comes to you like a roaring lion. It's already on the earth, but it's coming out of the depths of the abyss, the sea. A place that is unknown where we think is coming out of space. But here is saying from the sea, and I saw a beast come up out of the sea. And it had ten horns and seven heads. On its horns were ten crowns, and on its heads were blasphemous names. The beast I saw was like a leopard. Its feet were like a bear's, and its mouth was like a lion. So it's just, you know, all of this is representation of something even deeper, okay? Um, but it's about seeing one thing and yet seeing another, and yet seeing another, okay? The dragon gave the beast his power. Okay, So the dragon, which is behind the scene, gave the beast his power. He didn't give the beast power. He gave him his power. Okay? So again, it is another person's influence, another person's power working behind the scenes. For the beast. It says the dragon gave the beast 
the dragon behind the scenes gave the beast that means it's like this the vice spirit is telling me how can someone give you authority unless they have authority so here we have this dragon right here it says dragon comes from out of the sea out of the abyss out from where it is hidden but it wasn't hidden out of quote unquote space it was hidden in the sea it came up it didn't come into it came up so it's always been here so when you think about certain things with the government when you think about the system when you think about how things are it's about knowing that this dragon has been here this beast okay because the beast was the one that was coming out of the sea okay so the dragon gave the dragon gave the beast his power his throne and great authority so a dragon has a throne and authority all right one of its heads appear to be fatally wounded but its fatal wound was healed so when we when we go to healing you know when we think about healing we think about what yeshua was doing healing not just through uh touch healing through words healing through insight but here we are seeing how this blasphemous because it says that the on its heads were blasphemous names and one of the heads which was blasphemous to who wasn't blasphemous to the divine spirit it was i mean it, to it wasn't blasphemous to the dragon or this beast it was blasphemous towards divine spirit it was intended to be blasphemous to divine spirit okay and so that head now mind you again here it talks about it had 10 okay let's get back he had 10 horns and seven heads all connected to this beast the beast is the one that is the hand behind the scenes and as you may see these different puppets these different pawns it's about the hand that is moving the pieces the pawns it's the pawns not moving itself there is a hand moving the pawn also about the puppets there is a ventriloquist who is moving the puppets accordingly that means sending the messages because when we move our body our it's all different messages coded and decoded coded and decoded and this happens all throughout our days all throughout our lives and so it's different messages that is bringing forth the actions in our body well a ventriloquist is just it has no soul it's a puppet okay and so it's the hand giving its power all right to the ventriloquist but we need to understand that the vent i mean to the puppet we need to understand that the puppet by itself is nothing it is the hand it is the beast behind the scenes that is running the show and interesting enough healing and so when we think about healing as mentioned we think about something that is good but what i'm seeing here is that the head which has a blasphemous name blasphemous you know it's like it's a indirect attack on divine spirit because if it doesn't bother you then it won't affect you but the blasphemous names are there because it is so lower based that it is an indirect attack to divine spirit and so it says one of its heads appeared to be 
fatally wounded. So when I see here up here, and we're talking about the main trick, and we're talking about illusions, it will appear as though this person has been struck. It would appear whoo, that something has went down to bring forth a hurt to one of these heads, but it is just an illusion it appears as so but it is not it is fair is fair is faith fair is false evidence appearing real it isn't real because anything that and, and i'm feeling whew, anything that is not righteous will not be healed because true healing comes from divine spirit. Yeshua said, I am here to heal the sick so that there can be a change, a transformation, not a healing of something that's blasphemous so that it can continue to be blasphemous. So do you see what I'm saying? So anyways, here we have appeared to be it this is a master this is a master the of of illusion it appears it appears one way and appears in another way but really it's another puppet and it's really the hand that is remains hidden does not want the light does not want people to see because that is the biggest lie that satan doesn't exist but the thing is is that satan does exist and is running the thing that, oh, it's going to come out of space. It's not going to come out of space. Because it's saying there, it's saying here that it's coming out of the sea. And when you think about the sea, there is this level in the depths of the sea that is called the abyss. So it's not, when, when we see, when... The vice president was telling me, okay, so I watch movies and stuff by a projector. So I think the reason why I'm able to readily see how things can be projected onto something to make it big, okay, I greatly understand that. And what I'm saying is that there's temptations, there's distractions, and when none of those things work, there are disturbances. So as we're looking at this scene, this act, which appears to be certain ways. The Bible is already telling you. We just have to get into the Bible and we have to read it. We have to come to an understanding. Divine Spirit will let you know, will guide you and let you know. We have archangels and guardian angels. They will guide you to the truth. We are guided towards the truth. Divine Spirit doesn't tell lies. Because if Divine Spirit tells lies, then Divine Spirit and Satan are all one. And if they were all one, then none of this would be happening. It will not be something. It's not, we're not going to face an invasion. Let me make sure this camera is still going. <laughs> Things happen. <laughs> we're not going to be, it's not an invasion how we think it is. We're not, you know, it's like. There is saying that there's aliens coming out of space, coming out of space, right? Extra quote unquote terrestrials, right? But the Bible is saying that it's coming out from the sea. The Bible is, remember I was saying, um, I was sharing like my son was saying that everyone was being affected except for the White House. And the thing is that the White House was the first place that was being infiltrated. You see, Satan is not going to settle just for the average folk. No. Satan will infiltrate the head because it will trickle down. And we have to understand this. We have to see what we're working with. Not working with, but what is coming against us. Okay? It's coming out of the sea. Now with the projector, Divine Spirit was showing me a big eye. And it was projecting through that eye certain things that they wanted people to see. To what? To bring further control. I saw something about 7th Dimension, 7D, and how they were able to make a whale pop out of the gym floor. 
And this was many a years ago. And so they will always use illusions. They will all, because they are of lies. They don't have, look, Satan doesn't have power or authority. Satan is roaming around like a roaring lion. Not is the lion, but roaring like, mimicking. And we already know that there are karmics that mimic being divine, but true to the core, they're not divine. They appear, and this is appear, it's an illusion, it's a matrix. They work well with appearing to be so. They work well with, you know, illusions and lies. To what? To steal, kill, and destroy. So he will appear to be fatally wounded, but he, there is no actual healing taking place. Because healing is of love. And when you are healed, you are set free. Set free from the boundaries of dis-ease. Not, not healed so that you can continue on to be blasphemous. Because divine spirit, hallelujah, Yeshua stated, sin no more. You have been healed, sin no more. Now, it doesn't mean that we're not going to sin after we're healed, but don't do those same things again. Once you've been healed, once you've given a newness, do not do those things again. Anyways, the whole earth was amazed. They're amazed with the show. They have been programmed to be amazed with that up what appears to be, but not what is. Again, a distraction and a disturbance. The whole thing is strategic. Okay, so today, at this point in time, you're going to come in and you're going to fulfill this role. You're going to do this. You're going to pretend this. You're going to pretend to be against one another. These people know the Bible, but probably better than uh, how we know it. But they, in order to tell a lie, you have to know the truth in order to distort it. And they distort it so that you don't have the power of the truth. Because they know that the power of the truth makes you free. The whole earth was amazed and followed the beast. You see? It's all a disturbance. It's all a setup. Because... As I've mentioned in different channelings, it's about the equation. But you can change the equation by you raising your consciousness. See, they want you to be dull. They want you to be amazed. Follow my hand so that you don't see what the other hand is doing. Follow this puppet. Follow this pawn. But you don't know who's actually moving the pieces. They're going to use a projector of some type. So that they can swindle you. So they can elude you. The whole earth. The earth itself is not amazed by this nonsense. We are of the earth and the earth is of us. But the earth. Is not amazed by this. The earth knows what is going on. The earth is not amazed. But those who are in the earth. They're amazed. And followed what? The beast. They follow again after something that is eluded. Something that is false. So there was a disturbance. Where it appeared that one of the heads. Someone that we see. That we come to know. That is plastered all throughout uh, uh, TV. One of his heads appeared to be fatally wounded. That is just... The role that they play. But this person is not wounded. 
It is a ploy so that it can continue to guide the cattle towards believing that this fatal wound, which wasn't even a wound, is miraculously healed. The whole earth was amazed. People in it was amazed and followed the beast. They worshipped the dragon because he gave authority to the beast. You see, as we looking at these actors and actresses, thespians, athletes, we don't know who they're worshipping, but you go ahead and you're in pneumonia, you're worshipping the beast and you're worshipping the dragon. We are to uh, return our attention to divine spirit and Yeshua. But anyways, they worshiped the dragon. Because they worshiped and they were amazed at the lies that the beast. See, Satan only gives forth lies. And the children of Satan will only give forth lies. They don't metamorphose. They are morph. Like they, they transform. But they do not ascend. Device telling me they shape shift to make the lie real. But it's just an illusion. And they worship the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to rage war against it? The beast was given a mouth. To utter boasts and blasphemies. You see, it's strategic. You're given a mouth, but I'm going to tell you what to say. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the one that says it. And it's about boasting. And it's blasphemous. It was allowed to exercise authority. So when we're thinking about authority, it was able to do what it will. To exercise it. To put it forth. For 42 months, it began to speak blasphemies against God, to blaspheme his name and his dwelling. Now, interesting enough, <laughs> I was watching Cars 3 with my son, and um, I, I just, I love to spend time with my son. I'm not a cartoons type person, neither is he really, but that was a moment where we were watching it together. And I thought what was so interesting is that um, there was a teacher, and the teacher's dream was always to be the race car, <clears throat> race car in, in, in the race. Like, she wasn't just a teacher, she was a racer as well, a racer in heart, but she was always overlooked, and I was like, ooh. You know, it's just so interesting, right? But there was there was this uh, car <laughs> who was known for winning races. And on the outside, they saw this car as being fast and no one can catch up to the car. And so um, Lightning McQueen decided that instead of him finishing the race, he started the race the race but he didn't finish it because he saw that his teacher was the true racer he was able to see what other people chose not to see and he said you're gonna you're going to complete this race I started it but you're gonna finish it and she was just on the brink because her boss, <laughs> her boss was telling her that she had to work on something else. So she wanted to be there for the race because it was, it was like she was living vicariously through Steve, through, uh, through Lightning McQueen. And so she wanted to stay there, but um, she was called back. She was called back. The Vice Spirit is, is reminding me that she actually left the stadium. But thank goodness for divine timing because she was called back. 
She was called back because she's the one that has always been the true winner of that race. When she came back, you know, people were like, what are you doing here? And they went ahead and they dressed her up. And at, in the beginning, she was feeling some type of way. But see, uh, Lightning McQueen, I don't know why I'm trying to say Steve McQueen, but anyways, Lightning McQueen, he was telling the other dude what to say to encourage her. And he was just thinking that was so weird, but he didn't understand the connection that um, Lightning McQueen had with his teacher because she was the one that was was giving that connection to him when it came time for him to race but it wasn't his time anymore and it doesn't mean that just because it wasn't his time it was he was moving on from student to teacher and she was moving on from teacher to master because that's what she did with this race she mastered it and so that connection that he received from her, he was now the one to give it to her, to remind her. And as she was doing that, she was able to get further and further and further closer to number one. She, matter of fact, as she was becoming number three, <laughs> the, one that, the, the one that everyone saw as being the fastest one that was actually in the first place, he decided to slow down. Do you know why he slowed down? He slowed down because he wanted to get in her head, wanted her to be depressed, wanted her to feel like she didn't belong there. And to a degree, it worked. And then after he planted that wicked weed, which was meant to strangle her accomplishments of how far she came, Lightning McQueen reminded her, he's doing this because he's actually afraid of you. Remember this. And she realized he's afraid of me. So then, woo <laughs> you to go ahead and look at it. It is so cute. But it's got a message. They will, they will slow down. When they think they're winning, they will slow down to produce blasphemy. Lies. You don't need to do that if you're an actual winner. Right? And there are certain things that must be lost in order to win. But this was her calling. This is why she was called back. And when she knew, wait a minute, I'm powerful, he slowed down to plant this weed because he's actually afraid of me. Not the other way around. And that's the illusion. So then she sped up. And he thought, oh, that what he did was all good. But she was right on his tail. And then he was so determined, right? Would do anything at any cost. Rammed her against the wall. But she did a miraculous thing. And <laughs> it's so interesting what the vice president is telling me to say it like this. She came over it. She flipped and came over him and landed back on her wheels and she won. She flipped the script. <laughs> that's what I'm going to name this flipping the script isn't that interesting because it appears as so but you know what in this equation they see you beautiful soul family as someone that is cattle something that can be led to the slaughter but you must understand who you are this is why you go within you go within as the beast is coming out of the sea you go within because greater is divine spirit that is within you than that of which is in the world. Whew. Anyways, so <laughs> for 42 months, it began to speak blasphemous against God. To blaspheme his name. And his dwelling. And that whole point is, you know, why? If the beast is so strong, if a dragon has so much authority, why does it use its time? 
to place an attack against divine spirit. And his dwelling, those who dwell in heaven, and is permitted to wage war against the saints to conquer them. I look at that word permitted. And what I'm getting is permission. So even, hey, let's check this out. So for 42 months, it began to speak. It began to speak blasphemies against God to blaspheme his name and his dwelling those and to conquer them those who dwell in heaven okay so it was against divine spirit it's against the angelic realm and it was permitted to wage war against the saints. So this beast was exercising its authority to what? To bring forth toxicity. As we bring it back, how is something healed to continue forth? Yeshua said, you have been healed, sin no more. That means don't do the same thing that brought forth that disease. But they weren't actually healed. That was something that appeared to be real. But it wasn't. It was just a show. Divine Spirit is saying a trick of the eye. Because all it has is tricks. And it was permitted to rage war against the saints. Now my thing is this. If you have so much authority... You don't need to rage war with anybody. But in its power, this is what it's done. And this helps you to see what has always been. What they've been doing behind the scenes. 